okay so and i will come back so the next basic topic that we have is called the derivative is called the derivative and that's basically something that we have i mean in essence we have talked about this before but now we need to essentially connect it to the to the to the concepts that we have talked about before so i start from the very beginning so essentially when you have essentially a function like this for example let's say that this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis then if you have for example some function like this if you have some function like this you can basically call this point for example we saw that we could call this point for example a and this point would be if this if you call this f so this point would be f of a which means that this point would be basically a comma f of a right and if you take another another point over here call it for example x then basically this point would be f of x and so the coordinates of this point would be would be essentially x comma f of x right now if i draw a line through these two points like so i could easily calculate the i could easily calculate the 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 slope of this line the slope of this line would be the amount of rise that i have which is f of x minus f of a f of x minus f of a divide that by the amount of run that i have which is this distance which is x minus a this is the slope of l1 the slope of l1 right now it's important to note that 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 for example if if for example if this this axis represented for example position of a car along a straight road and if this axis represented time this would be the distance covered and this would be the time taken to cover that distance and so uh, basically distance covered distance covered distance covered divided by time would be by definition would be essentially average velocity would be average velocity and this is a secant line right this is a secant line right which essentially tells me that the slope of l1 which is the secant line which essentially tells me that the slope of l1 which is again the secant line that is the average velocity if basically if this if this was a situation in which we were talking about the position of a car versus time essentially so that would be average velocity right so this is one important thing to consider now we saw that basically we saw that basically that and and so um so the, essentially this is the this essentially the average velocity would be the average rate of change of position with respect to time right the average velocity would be the average rate of change of position with respect to time meaning that you could you would say you would ask yourself for example where was i for example at x is equal to at, at time a I was at f of a along the road at time x I was at f of x along the road so uh, between essentially time a and time x essentially my position has changed from f of a to f of x which means that basically in this interval of time there has been so much change in, in my position so when I calculate this this fraction over here this means that this is the average rate of change of position with respect to time right so it makes sense that that if i want to so it makes sense that if i want to 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 find the instantaneous velocity of this car 
basically we saw that we could find the instantaneous velocity as if we took the limit of the same thing the limit of basically f of x minus f of a over basic x minus a as x approaches a because as you take this limit and as x approaches a then basically the slope of these lines is going to get closer and closer to the slope of to the slope of this line over shear which is tangent to the graph of the function at this point so this is the tangent line this is the tangent line and this is the slope of the tangent line this is the slope of the tangent line and <coughs> so then this would be essentially your instantaneous this would be your instantaneous velocity right so this is another important thing to take into consideration now moreover basically um, moreover we saw that basically in the in the exact same situation we could we could call basically this if this distance you could call it for example x minus a you could also call it h for example right now if x minus a is equal to h that means that x is equal to a plus h right so that means that over here I could say that basically the same limit over here I could write it as the limit of basically f of x would be essentially a plus h minus f of a and then in the denominator if I write x which is a plus h minus a these two you can cancel out you, you would be left with an h and then as x approaches a uh, h is approaching 0 so over here you can write h approaches 0 which means that basically um, the same basically the same the exact same thing that we have that we have written over here you could also write it this way meaning that these two would represent the exact same thing right so so if essentially so we can we can also say that if the average velocity is the average rate of change of position with respect to time then instantaneous velocity would be instantaneous rate of change of position with respect to time i repeat this if average velocity is the average rate of change of position with respect to time then instantaneous velocity which is the slope of this line would be the instantaneous rate of change of position with respect to time right and and so basically this um, but then essentially you could think of this you could think of this 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 essentially you don't have to think in terms of basic the uh, position and time and all of those things you can you, you could essentially make it a little bit more abstract meaning that you could say that basically the, the the slope of this line would be the average rate of change of the average rate of change of the function whatever you have along this axis this would represent essentially the average rate of change of whatever you have along this axis with respect to whatever you have along this horizontal axis right and then by the same logic then you could say that basically that this that the slope of this tangent line would be the instantaneous rate of change of whatever quant physical quantity you have along this vertical axis with respect to whatever physical quantity you have along this horizontal axis over here right so essentially that means that essentially these two lines and particularly this line over here which is the tangent line this represents essentially the rate of change right this essentially represents the, the rate of change exactly at this point x is equal to a right now 
the rate of change essentially has a lot of applications and different branches of science engineering for example in chemistry in physics in even in economics and so on and so forth and so these functions over here meaning that this function and particularly this 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 form of the the same thing has been given a name and the name that it has been given has been called it's been called the derivative right so which means that basically then as a definition we can say that as a definition number four as a definition number four we can say that the derivative of a function f we can say that the derivative of a function of a function f at a number a at the number a denoted by denoted by f prime of a meaning the derivative of f at a is equal to the limit of basically the limit of f of a plus h minus f of a over h as h approaches zero right and of course this is this is provided that this is provided that the limit that the limit exists right so this is the definition that we had before essentially this is the exact same concept that we have been talking about but now we can we can essentially make it um, a little bit more formal essentially right now of course you know that basically the same definition you can write it as uh, you can write it as basically um, well you could say that f of basically f prime of x is equal to the limit of basically f of x minus basically f of a over basically x minus a as x approaches a right you could do that as well meaning that in the same definition basically what you could do is that you could set um, h as basically as uh, you could set over here you could set basically h as uh, x minus a for example as we did before and so uh, that means that then basically x would be equal to essentially x would be equal to uh, a plus h and as basically as h approaches zero as h approaches zero here then basically x approaches to a x approaches to a then you could write essentially the same thing you could write the same thing as as basically as f prime of a is equal to the limit of and then f of a plus h you can write it as x so that would be f of x minus f of a over h would be the same thing as basically x minus a as and as h approaches zero x approaches a so as x approaches a so you can write it this way as well right so there is that's that these two essentially have the exact same meaning so um so that's basically give or take essentially the whole story now now let me show you a, an example here let's say that you want to find this is example number four this is example number four let's say that you want to find find the derivative of you want to find the derivative of f of x 
is equal to x squared minus 8x plus 9 at at a right meaning that you want to find the derivative of this function how would you find that so you can use the same definition that that basic the f prime of f prime of 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 a is equal to the limit of basic d f of a plus h minus f of a over h as h approaches zero right so then essentially usually essentially i i usually set these up separately and then substitute them in the formula meaning that i write basic the f of a plus h in this case would be the same thing as basic the a plus h based on this raised to the second power minus eight times basic the a plus h plus nine uh, which would be the same thing as a squared plus two times a h plus h squared minus eight times a minus eight times h plus nine and uh, this is h squared a squared a times a and a times h plus nine so that's that's essentially one thing and f of a and f of a is the same thing as a squared minus a times a plus nine right so this would be essentially the limit of <coughs> the limit of f of a plus h which is basically a squared plus two times a h plus h squared minus eight times a minus eight times h plus nine minus f of a which is minus this whole thing so you have to multiply the negative sign by the whole thing negative a squared plus eight times a minus nine and then a squared and a squared you can cancel out a times a a times a you can cancel out nine and nine you can cancel out divided by h as h approaches zero so this is the limit of basic d write this two times a h plus h squared negative eight times h over h as h approaches zero now you can solve this problem very easily Meaning that you can write this as the limit of basically take an h out here. 2a plus h minus 8 over h as h approaches 0. And cancel these two out. As h approaches 0, this becomes 2a minus 8. So this becomes the derivative of your function at a. So now basically what remains here is that well when we talked about essentially all of these things basically we saw that we saw that basically that that basically that this expression or this expression is was essentially the slope of this tangent line right the slope of this tangent line which is basically the uh, instantaneous rate of change of whatever quantity you might have along this axis with respect to whatever quantity you might have along this axis right and we essentially in this definition then we the exact same essentially expression we defined it as the derivative of the function f at a number at some number a which is denoted by f prime of a right so this essentially tells us that the derivative of of a function the derivative of a function f at some point a is essentially is is the slope of the tangent line at the slope of the tangent line essentially the, the slope of the line tangent to the graph of the function at basically at the point a right so i repeat this so that you can understand it essentially without any confusion so then you could say that the that the derivative of that the derivative of basically of f at a denoted by denoted by basically by f prime of a which is 
which is basically the limit of essentially f of a plus h minus f of a over h as h approaches zero is nothing but is nothing but the but the the slope of the the slope of the line tangent to the graph of the function to the graph of f at x is equal to a right so that's again another connection that you can make between everything else that we have said which means that basically um, the equation of so then based on this essentially if if essentially if the slope of this of this tangent line is is essentially this 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 expression over here if the slope of this tangent line is this expression over here which is equal to f prime of a then we can say that basically that to essentially to calculate the to, to essentially to write down the the this the to to essentially the equation of the equation of the line of the of the tangent line of the tangent line at x is equal to a would be then the, basically the the, the 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 line essentially you can write it as y minus y one is equal to m times x minus x1 and since m is the slope of the line and is equal to is supposed to be equal to this expression and since this expression is f prime of a you can write it as and if we take essentially um, if we take essentially as x1 as a for example then the, the point essentially becomes a and f of a right the point essentially becomes becomes a and f of a meaning your, your x1 y1 becomes a and f of a so then you could write this as y minus basically f of a is equal to m which is essentially this this derivative which is f prime of a times basically x minus a so that's essentially how you can write the equation of that line meaning that Meaning that, for example, if you want to find meaning that if you want to find basically the the equation of the tangent line, if you want to find the equation of the tangent line of the tangent line to the parabola. to the parabola y is equal to x squared minus 8 times x plus 9 at basically neg at positive 3 and negative 6 then how how would you find this you essentially you need to have you need to uh, you need to to essentially to find the um, the derivative of the function at this point so as to find the, the the slope of the line and then write write down essentially the equation of the line right so first we need to uh, find the derivative of the function at basically at x is equal to 3 for example which means that we need to calculate f prime of 3 basically which is the limit of basically f of or essentially in general we can say that f prime of a is equal to the limit of basically f of a plus h minus f of a over h as h approaches zero right now in this case basically your a is equal to three uh, so so basically then basically you can calculate f of for example a plus h would be f of basically three plus h 
would be the same thing as basically based on this this x this expression would be 3 plus h raised to the second power minus 8 times basically 3 plus h plus 9 which is the same thing as well you could write this as 3 squared is equal to 9 plus 2 times is equal to 6 times h plus h is squared uh, minus 8 times 3 is equal to 24 uh, minus 8 times h plus 9 which would be the same thing as uh, basically 9 plus 9 is equal to 18 24 minus 18 is the same thing as uh, uh, 6 so that's a negative 6 so you can write this as 6 times h plus h is squared um, and over here you also have basically 6 x minus 6 h minus 8 h is the same thing as negative 2 h negative 2 h and plus h is squared and then 9 plus 9 is equal to 18 24 minus 18 is equal to negative 6 that's f of a plus h and your f of a would be equal to for example a squared minus 8 times a plus 9 right so then you could you could you could then say that basically f prime of 3 would be equal to the limit of basically f of f of 3 plus h minus f of 3 um, and here I need to calculate f of 3 so f of 3 would be uh, basically 3 squared is equal to 9 minus 8 times 3 is equal to 24 plus 9 um, which is the same thing as 18 minus 24 is equal to negative 6 and then over h as h approaches 0 which would be the same thing as basically f of 3 plus h is this thing over here which is negative 2 times h plus h squared minus 6 minus f of 3 which is negative minus negative 6 is positive 6 over h and you have to take the limit of this as h approaches 0. So these two you can cancel out. And then you can write this as... And then you can write this as basically as the limit of basically take an h out from the numerator h times negative 2 plus h over h as h approaches 0. And then h and h you can cancel out as the as h approaches zero this becomes a negative two right so that means that the, the the slope of the line is equal to negative two which is essentially the which is essentially the derivative of the function at x is equal to three right now the point is three comma negative six the point is three comma negative six which means that and as you can see it's not really necessary to memorize any of these things meaning that for example i wrote a few minutes ago i wrote for example y minus f of a is equal to for example f prime of a times for example x minus a if you ask me this tomorrow i will have forgotten it i, I it's not possible for me to to remember any of these things I can understand them but then I, I, you always forget them but but then as long as you understand that basically that that that, that essentially you want to write essentially the the equation of a straight line and the equation of a straight line you can write it as y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1 right and I know that basically that this m is the derivative the derivative of the, the derivative of f right which is the slope of the line essentially and then this is y1 this is x1 so you can just simply substitute everything in this formula and, and solve the problem so this y would be y uh, essentially minus negative 6 is plus 6 is equal to m which is negative 2 times x minus 3 which gives us y plus 6 is equal to negative 2x plus 6 and um, that means that y is equal to negative 2x and 
and then if you take a look at your function you will see that the point was basically 3 comma negative 6 3 comma negative 6 and the function was x squared minus 8 times x plus 9 which is this function over here and you can see that the point is actually on the line and the curve essentially and then the equation that we found was y is equal to negative 2x y is equal to negative 2x and that's essentially tangent to the graph of the function exactly at this point and you can see that at this point essentially the function has the exact same slope as the as the tangent line essentially there is no difference between the slope of the two between the slope of the the, the function and the slope of the tangent line right so that was basically um, all about that and one more time you can see this over here again basically this is the tangent to the graph of the function at this point okay now the next thing that remain is the rate of change and then after the rate of change we have we have nothing more left to say about basically uh, then we have essentially the exercises so i'll see you in the next video with the rate of change thank you